Hey folks, today's video is brought to you by salvagereseller.com. This website allows you to bid live on online salvage auto auctions without a dealer's license. You can register for free or use the 20% off coupon in the description below. Go find your salvage car gem now. Hey everybody, welcome to the 2024 Jeep Wrangler Expert Buyer's Guide. So in this video, I'm gonna help you decide what you want on your 2024 Wrangler, what you should spend, and more importantly, what options you should forego, because I have a lot of experience with Wranglers here at TFL. We've owned every generation of Wrangler dating back to the YJ. We've owned multiple JLs, and we have driven just about every configuration. And for 2024, the Wrangler has been updated, and we've got a whole bunch of changes. And in this video, we're gonna dive into those changes here on the Jeep Build and configurator page which just went live which means we're not too far out from uh, these vehicles hitting dealerships and I kind of want to give you um, uh, you know some great tips so that you go into your 2024 Wrangler purchase um, knowledgeable and understand what to buy and what not to buy so for 2024 as always the first decision you have to make is should you buy a two-door or should you buy the unlimited four-door model and you can see on many of the models that are offered for 2024, you have the option to select the two-door bubble or the four-door bubble. Well, the first thing you need to know is it's gonna be about a $4,000 premium uh, if you step up to the four-door, and that is a considerable amount of money. But then you have to consider the resale because a four-door is gonna sell much easier down the road and it's gonna to appeal to a much larger buyer demographic. Now, the two-door is great. I've owned two doors, I love them, they're a ton of fun. But if you have family, friends, or the need to carry anything larger than a toaster oven, the four door is gonna be the way to go. So in this configurator, we're gonna focus on the four door configuration. Now let's talk a little bit more about pricing because the Wrangler has gotten more expensive for 2024, but not that much more expensive. So on the low end, um, the Wrangler lineup has increased by a few hundred dollars. So you can see a four door starting price in 23 was 35,195 and for 24, it's 35,895. But then if you jump up to some of the higher end trims like a Sahara, that price increase has gone up by closer to $2,000. The good news is you are getting added standard technology in the 2024 Wrangler. Now this is the press release um, from when Jeep debuted this back in April. And and the Wrangler now delivers standard first and second row side curtain airbags, standard forward collision warning Sport S and above, and standard advanced cruise control with stop uh, start Sport S and above. So you do get more safety features. You also get uh, a new 12.3 inch touchscreen display. So you are getting some more added features for that increase in price. Now let's take a detailed look here at the different models available for 2024. On the base end, you've got the Sport that's going to be you know, for most people, if you see one on the road, it's most likely a rental Jeep. It's got basic steel wheels. It's got the not a lot of features, not a lot of frills, just your standard everyday Jeep. And if you get a two-door two -door Sport, it doesn't even come standard with power windows, power door locks, power mirrors. I think it's actually the last vehicle on the market today here in the US that doesn't have power door locks, that um, doesn't have power mirrors, and certainly one of the last that doesn't have power windows, good old fashioned roll up. Now from there, you've got the Sport S. This is kind of one of the sweet spots in the lineup. It gives you alloy wheels. It also now gives you standard adaptive cruise control, which is great. Um, it gives you some nicer features on the inside. It gives you power accessories. From there, you have the Willys, which is like the everyman off-roader. Now for 2024, it's got a standard rear locking differential, which is a huge deal. We'll talk about that in a second. From there, you've got the Rubicon. That's going to be the ultimate off-roader. It's gonna have the locking diffs and the sway bar disconnect and all that fun jazz. Then you've got the Sahara, which is the luxury-oriented Jeep. It's going to be the nicest on the road, the most street going. Next up, we've got a new trim, the Rubicon X, which is an even harder core version of the Rubicon with standard um, uh, things like steel bumpers. And then at the top trim, we've got the Rubicon 392, which is the crazy V8-powered Jeep. And that's actually got a pretty significant price increase for 2024. It used to be 82 and now it starts at $88,000. That's always been a very expensive Jeep it's sticking around for 2024. And then later on, we'll talk about the four by E models, which are the plug-in hybrid versions. And there's some cool stuff going on there. So let's start out by building out a Wrangler. We're gonna build out a Sport S because I think that is a sweet spot in the Wrangler lineup. Not too crazy expensive, but not so basic where you're cranking up windows. And the Sport S delivers a bunch Bunch of interesting things and a bunch of changes for 2024 starting we're actually going to scroll down here to the bottom to take a look at the engine options because those have been tweaked a little bit now there are still um, your standard powertrain uh, 
um, options. You have the 3.6 liter V6, the Pentastar with 285 horsepower. You've got the two liter turbo four cylinder with 270 horsepower. You've got the um, uh, uh, Top Dog 392, the big V8. You've got the plug-in hybrid model as well. The diesel is no more. And then you've got the choice of six speed manual and eight speed automatic. The big change that I've discovered for 2024, and I've been talking to Jeep back and forth about this over the last couple days, Interestingly enough is on every trim except for Rubicon, if you want an automatic, you have to get the two liter. So it used to be you could get the 3.6 liter V6 um, with an automatic. That engine also had uh, a mild hybrid system called e-torque. But now, unless you're buying a Rubicon, if you want an automatic, you have to go for the two liter turbo. A little bit of a shame in my opinion. I'm not a big fan of the two liter turbo. Um, you know, it's a very powerful engine, delivers almost 300 pound feet of torque, works great up here at elevation. I just find the power delivery to be a little bit peaky. I find the engine to be a little bit too high strung for a Wrangler, and I really dislike the way it sounds. A lot like a Dyson, to be honest. It's got this kind of high-pitched whale, which just has never fit very well with me. So um, in the past, I've always recommended the 3.6 liter V6 with the automatic combo. That Pentastar V6 has been around for over a decade now, and it's really proved itself to be reliable. But that's not really an option unless you go for a Rubicon. So if you're not gonna go for a Rubicon, you're, you're, you're kind of in a pickle. I mean, my, my number one choice would be drive the manual transmission with the V6. That's not an option for many, but um, Looks like if you want like a Sport S with an automatic, two liter turbo is going to be the way to go. You also have to pay more, of course. So look at this, if I step up to that two liter with the automatic, it's gonna be about a $2,500 increase. So that's a big change for 2023. Now let's talk about some of the, uh, the, the great standard features, what you should buy, and then some optional standard features, stuff that you shouldn't buy. So as we're looking here, got a bunch of different colors. We got some really bright ones like high velocity. We've got my favorite color, Sarge Green. I think that's a great color. Um, and then you've got, of course, classics like the Firecracker Red and the, the, the black clear coat. So, you know, that's all going to be very subjective based on, you know, your opinions and, and what you think looks good. Uh, doors off mirror kit by Mopar. If you take your doors off, you lose your mirror uh, and you want a mirror when you're driving along, this is a $195 option. Personally, I would skip that. If you want to take your doors off, just get a mirror off Amazon. You can do it cheaper. You can get a black grill by Mopar. All preference, all the graphic stuff is all preference. Personally, not for me. You also have a couple choices of wheel options in this Sport S, um, which is pretty cool. 17 inches, both aluminum, but with two different designs. You also have the option for all-terrain tires in the Sport S, 495 bucks. That is an option I would probably go for because if you are planning on taking your Jeep off-road or even through some snow and rocky situations, um, having an all-terrain tire is a great thing and being able to spec that for under 500 bucks is a really great deal. Dual door group allows you to, uh, you know, have your vehicle with um, uh, these little half doors and your full doors, nearly a $5,000 option. A couple different variations on that. Now the side steps are a very nice option if you are a shorter individual, it helps you get in and out. Um, not very good off road though, cause you can scrape them up unless you get the rock slider version for 975 bucks, which is less of a step in my opinion, but more protection on the side. That could be a good option if you're planning and doing a lot of off roading. All right, now for the top configurations. So every Jeep comes standard. Well, for the most part, every Jeep, your vast majority of Jeeps are gonna come standard with a soft top and it's a very premium material manufactured by Best Top. I've had a lot of experience with it. You can pull out the windows, you can do the Sunrider thing where you fold back the front. It's a really good system, but if you live in a city and if you live in really cold environments, I definitely recommend the black three-piece hard top. It still is 1500 bucks for 2024, but well worth the investment. It's got freedom panels in the front, which you can take out and then have access to um, you know, the sun. Of course, they're kind of clunky, you gotta put it back in, um, you gotta put them in the trunk, for example, but the hard top is a great option. There's also the option for the Sky One Touch Power Top. Now this is a top with a fabric middle portion. Push a button, it slides back elegantly and you have access to the full sun. Really is a great option, but it is pretty pricey, 3,500 bucks. I have had a lot of experience with it though and it works really well and actually works even well in the, the winter. It's a pretty good system. So um, for me, I would probably go for the black three piece hard top just to save a little bit of money, but the, the Sky One Touch is a good option. There's also the availability of a dual top group, which gives you both hard and soft tops. It's a fine option. Personally, I like to commit to one or the other because then you're not dealing with two tops, 
But um, for me, I think the three-piece hardtop is the way to go. Now on the interior, bunch of changes. First thing you notice, this really gorgeous 12.3 inch Uconnect five inch display. That's standard on the lineup. So my Jeep had this little teeny weeny postage stamp screen in it. Now even the base models get this huge 12.3 inch touchscreen display, which is great. But I'm not seeing the option for any other interior color other than black on the Sport S. They used to be able to get the Heritage Beige, which was a really nice color. Not seeing that anymore. There's a hard top headliner by Mopar, which is essentially these soft panels that stick to the, the roof and help with sound deadening. It looks like carpet. I don't think it sounds very different. I'd probably skip that. Um, the Jeep Trail Rated Kit, 195 bucks. As always, the worst investment in the Jeep lineup. It's a bag with a strap and a pair of gloves and a D-ring. You can buy that stuff for 50 bucks. Don't waste your money on that. Plastic dill sill guards, honestly, I wouldn't waste my money on that either. Now let's talk about some of the options. LED headlight and fog lamp group. Depending on your trim, the Jeep still comes standard with halogen headlights and they are still candles in the wind. They are just horrible when it comes to, um, uh, you know, seeing at night. So I do think it's worth the money. The price is gonna change depending on the trim a little bit. The convenience group, in this case, it offers things like automatic air conditioning, seven inch um, digital cluster display, heated front seats, heated steering wheel. If you live in a really cold environment, having those heated seats and heated steering wheel is nice, but otherwise, I think the technology is fine. You can also buy the technology group, which is the Alpine premium sound system and the 240 amp alternator. Honestly, the Alpine premium sound system doesn't sound that much better than the standard sound system. It just gives you a huge amount of bass. So I typically skip that. And then there's a safety group as well with automatic high beam control, LED tail lights, park sense rear park system. Um, uh, it gives you blind spot detection. If you really care about that stuff, it's a good option there. And then the trailer tow and heavy duty electrical group, 240 amp alternator, um, it gives you the uh, the 700 amp maintenance free battery and it also gives you these little switches which I've had to install after the fact and it means removing the entire dashboard. This is well worth the 995 bucks, especially if you want to add accessories later on. So some other things we see in here, cold air intake by Mopar, don't spend 500 bucks. And there's also now a RV tow harness by Mopar, 700 bucks, which is great if you want to tow your Jeep behind uh, an RV. So that's a Sport S trim, but let's go ahead and look at the Rubicon because we are big off-road people here because there's some unique Rubicon options in here as well. So first of all, colors, much of this is the same as the Sport, got a couple of different wheel trims. Um, Extreme Recon package is returned. It's uh, an option to upgrade the 35 inch tall tires from the factory with a slight lift. That's gonna increase the price significantly. It really bumps up the price. Personally, um, you know, the lift looks great. It really is a, a, a cool thing to, to, you know, show your friends. And it's, it's in this case, about 4,000 um, bucks. Can you lift your Jeep for four grand? Yes, you can. Can you get tires plus a lift for four grand? Yes, you can. Are you gonna get the same ride quality and integration? Probably not. Um, so I would probably recommend the Extreme Recon package if you want that lifted Jeep look, because it really isn't a bad deal when you consider the fact you get the big tires and the lift and it's all warrantied and it rides really well. And you get the tire relocation kit and all these little fender flare extensions and it's like, it's a pretty good value. So if you want to really go off road seriously, as if a Rubicon wasn't already good enough, or you just want to look cool, in my opinion, it's probably worth the price. Now, when we talk about engines on this, um, uh, Wrangler. Um, the reason that that price jumped up more than four grand is because it kicked me out of the six, the 3.6 with the six speed manual and made me get the six speed um, or the eight speed automatic, excuse me. And in the Rubicon, once again, we talked about this, the only way to get that V6 and the automatic is in the Rubicon trim. And to get the automatic transmission option on a Rubicon is a $4,500 option which is absolutely nuts. That is a huge amount of money. Now I asked Jeep why they did this, you know, made this decision and they said, primary reason is configuration reduction to make it easier for customers and dealers alike. So if you wanna save money, still get an automatic, you gotta go for that two liter. Otherwise you're gonna be jumping up another 2,500 bucks to get the um, uh, V6 with the automatic. And I like that combo, but is it really worth that much more? Probably not. So I'd go ahead and get the two liter. Um, with the uh, automatic and the Rubicon and just bite the bullet there. Uh, other cool things too is there's now an option for a 488 rear axle ratio, which is a standalone option, thousand bucks. I think it's well worth it if you really wanna go deep off-road, if you're looking to crawl, that is a great option. I love that they're adding that. And some other cool things which are, we're seeing here on this Rubicon trim, 
Um, the steel and bumper and winch group, 3,495 bucks. That gives you the steel bumper in the front, steel bumper in the rear, and an integrated Warren winch, all for 3,500 bucks. That's a screaming deal. If you are looking to buy a Rubicon to go off-road and you're planning on putting a winch on it and changing the bumpers, you're not gonna be able to get both bumpers and a winch for 3,500 bucks installed. So that really is a screaming deal. Definitely recommend that. We got the same um, uh, group of suspects here when it comes to the convenience group. Um, heated steering wheel, remote start, that's all in there. There's also a technology group on this Rubicon, which gives you stuff like the cameras, the off-road camera, integrated voice command. I don't think it's worth the 2,300 bucks, personally. Safety group, which we talked about, and then there is that extreme recon. So the big deal with the Rubicon is it allows you to get the V6 with the automatic, but oh boy, do you have to pay for it. Um, so that's, that's pretty interesting. Okay, so for the 2024 model year, the 4xe Wrangler lineup, the plug-in hybrid version has gotten a lot bigger. Of course, the plug-in hybrid version allows you to go about 20, 25 miles on electricity after a couple hour charge on a level two charger. And then of course it's got a gasoline engine so you can drive, um, uh, you know, couple hundred miles on gasoline before uh, you know you have the option to just keep filling up gasoline or recharge it. it. It really does expand the the use case for the Wrangler. And if you have a commute, honestly, commute 20, 30 miles, and you have a place to plug in at night, even on just like a standard level one home outlet, the battery is not that big. This makes a ton of sense. I know a lot of 4xe owners that watch the channel, they never use a drop of gas because they just commute 10, 15 miles. They use a gasoline engine for road trips, but on their everyday driving, they just love plugging it into the wall, letting it charge up overnight, waking up, driving 20 miles, plugging in it again. It's a good option. And for 2024, we've got a new Sport 4xe. Now the MSRP 49,995 starting, but this does qualify for the full uh, $7,000 in, in federal tax credit. So you could drop that price, you know, by over uh, $7,000 if your tax liability is great enough. And this is a really attractive offer because now instead of having a $50,000 vehicle, when you factor in the tax credit, you're really gonna be looking at like low 40s. And that that is pretty attractive to me. So um, standard Sport S stuff, you've got, uh, you know, the new grill on this model. You've got new wheels. Uh, you got the color painted flares. It, it really is not a bad option, and this is one I would seriously consider. You also have the full-time four-wheel drive transfer case. Um, I would really look into getting this model if you are interested in um, the 4xe. And then, of course, you have the top-end 4xe's, which are like the Rubicon X and the high altitude, which are going to be luxury. But then you're looking at 70 grand plus for a Jeep Wrangler, and that's that's pushing it for me. So let's talk about the trim that I would get, and we're going to start out with the standard Jeep Wrangler. Um, for me. I'm about to build it. Um, the one I would get for 2024. Now, my favorite spec is the Willys, the kind of affordable, and I say affordable in quotes because it really isn't that affordable anymore, but the Willys four-door, because I'm going to build a four-door, most people buy the four-door, it's going to be about 45 grand. Um, and you can see that includes that ridiculous $1,800 destination. But uh, color-wise, um, I'm really a big fan of Sarge. That's going to be that $495 option. For me, I'm going to skip the door kit. I'm going to skip the uh, optional wheels. I'm going to skip the dual door group because in my opinion, I like doors on, doors off. Uh, but that is an option. I'm going to skip it. I'm going to skip the rock rail step. I'm probably going to add the three-piece hard top on because I live in Colorado. It gets really cold here. Um, on the interior, we got the standard big screen. I'm going to skip some of these accessories, skip the heart, the headliner kit. I'm going to skip the sills and the trail rated group. Um, in terms of safety and convenience, let's see what, what we got going on here. Um, I'm going to skip the convenience group as much as I like heated seats, skip technology, and skip the safety group. And then let's go ahead and add on uh, the Extreme Recon for $4,000. Here, let's, let's pick the engine first. Um, although if I do the Extreme Recon, it's going to... It's probably going to boot the six-speed manual. Uh, yeah, it is. Okay, so I'm not going to do the Extreme Recon because I want the V6, and I'm going to stick with the manual transmission. So I'm going to keep the smaller tires, which is fine, and I'm going to utilize the new rear locker option, which comes standard in um, all the willies, which is great. Um, yeah, this is this is a good little, good little Jeep. That's very, very cool. And my price... Right now is 47,180. So you can see the options there at about two grand. So pretty modestly specced, keeping it under 50 grand. 
you know, you got that new attractive grill, you got the new screen, some of the new touches. I think that's a pretty good looking Jeep. Um, Another thing I want to quickly mention is Rubicons now have a full floating rear end ratio, rear axle ratio, which allows them to tow 5,000 pounds, which is great. You know, that's, that's a, a, a great thing for um, people that, you know, wanted a Wrangler and had a little camper but couldn't live with the 3,500 pound towing capacity. Now all Rubicons come with that flow, full float rear axle um, and can tow 5,000 except for the Extreme Recon 35 inch tire ones. I got confirmation from Jeep that they do not. So, um, so far you saw my, my first choice, which is gonna be that Willys. My second choice though is actually gonna be a four by E. It's gonna be that new base model, the Sport S. Now for 2024, the Wrangler four by E um, is a, uh, available with a new option called the Power Box, 4xE Power Box, that gives you 120 volt outlets with 30 amps of total output. So you can utilize some of that Jeep uh, battery, the plug-in hybrid battery for camping and stuff. Now that's gonna be standard on the Sahara and the Rubicon, and it's gonna be late availability, I've been told, on the Sport S 4xE, but I'm gonna live without that because I think that this is actually now the secret value in the lineup. 470 pound-feet of torque, even on this $50,000 Jeep before tax credit. So let's see, what options would I get on this one? Um, let's, let's pick a different color just for a heck of it. We're gonna go with Earl, kind of this light blue, it's pretty cool. Skip a lot of these, I just don't find that the Mopar accessories are worth it some of the time. Uh, skip the side steps. We're gonna go, we're gonna, we're gonna build this one with the Sky One Touch, because on this model it's a little cheaper, it's only three grand. Um, skip the snorkel. On the inside, I'm gonna skip all of this stuff, skip the headliner, uh, skip the leather seats. I think the cloths are just fine. And then I'm going to add the LED um, headlight and fog group. There we go. And I'm gonna add the um, heavy duty electrical group. Uh, all that's the same. And you can see the price on this model, 57,750. 70, that's before the federal tax credit. So um, if you do qualify for income is enough and you do have federal tax credits in, in excess of seven grand, this would be at the end of the day, roughly a $50,000 Jeep. And I think that's pretty good value for the four by E with the 470 pound feet of torque and the 20 plus mile range. So there you go. Those are my two configurations on how I would build my 2024 Wrangler. Would love to hear your opinions on how you would build yours. I know the prices are getting up there. They're getting expensive. I know I'm gonna hear about it in the comments section below. I don't set the prices, don't blame me. Um, but uh, you know, they've only gone up 700 bucks to two grand and you get a lot more standard features. And now there's a couple really good value options like the bumper group with the, the, the integrated winch, fantastic value. I find that the Extreme Recon for the most part is very good value. Um, I wish that you could get the V6 and the auto across the board. Um, and I wish you could get that full float axle across the board as well so you could get the 5,000 pound tow rating without having to step up to the Rubicon. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. This has been Tommy, Editor Ian. We'll see you in the next video.